Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about bread and butter. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, as a programmer, what tools do you consider your bread and butter? Ooh, this is a good question. And it's a little bit hard to answer as well. It's not It's not because I can't tell you. I, can, I have a few things at the top of my head, but it's one of those things where you don't really Thinks like you've done things for so long that you don't really think about what you're, how you're doing it, or like why you're doing it, or if what things you are using. So I'll try my best to keep it, to to, to really f f capture all the things. Okay, so bread and butter tools. Let's put it at the simplest base level first and foremost. Well, a good editor, of course, something that you feel comfortable with. My personal favorite editor is Visual Studio Code. I think it's a great editor. I used to use Sublime before as a text editor and you can because both the, like I went over to Visual Studio Code mostly because of uh, my love of TypeScript and like t the Visual Studio Code is a very great product in general of course and Sublime is great as well. There are still things I like Sub Sublime I could like with Sublime that are better with Sublime. Uh, than that it is in Visual Studio Code, but overall I kind of just nudged over there. Uh, and then overall I don't have, like, it depends a little bit on what I'm doing. So I, if I do, say, Java development or Scala, as I do these days, the I'm very sorry to say the best option on the market that I've found so far is IntelliJ. Now IntelliJ is a great uh, idea, but just that the Scala support has always been crap, in my opinion, always. Uh, but that's not IntelliJ's fault, I would say. It's a different thing. Uh, and the same thing kind of goes for whatever I'm doing. So if it's like PHP, then I use an ID such as PHP Storm or WebStorm to do that sort of development. Some people want to have like a one, have one thing for everything. And I mean, sure, if I can get away with using Visual Studio Code, I always try to get away with using Visual Studio Code. But for some things, I just see like it's better to have a specialized tool that is really good at the thing that I'm supposed to be doing rather than to have something that is very general, that is very much in opposition to some of my coworkers who love to use Emacs. And for them, like Emacs is like, it's uh, it's almost an erotic thing at this point where they 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 have, if, if Skynet starts anywhere, it's gonna be inside of Emacs, somewhere there, that's where Skynet is gonna start. And they're gonna welcome their new overlord. I promise you, they're gonna line up to be taken over, to be assimilated into the swarm. But so yeah, a great idea is first and foremost, and then I will say uh, a version control system such Git is the one I use. I used to use Mercurial uh, way back, but Git is definitely the one I use. Uh, the the uh, for me these things uh, well, the reason why they are bread bread and butter is because you I can't even imagine how you would do work in a professional environment without them. So Git, yes, for sure. There, I've, I've just heard, honestly God, I've never seen it in, in a professional environment, but I've heard from people who've contacted me saying that, oh, well, in this company, they don't use the version control system. And I kind of go, that, that, that seems very odd. It seems very, very odd. I mean, it's not like it can't work, but it, to me, it's kind of like going to a restaurant where they don't use tables. Okay, so I'm gonna hold my plate now. Well, yeah, I can see how that could work, but at the same time, it's let's can we just agree that it's a little bit unconventional, a little bit out there, it's a bit different. So a version control system for sure. Uh, but then apart from that, a Kanban board, which uh, this is very like, lofty things of course but kind of kind of more for doing work and so for tra issue tracking uh, my main tools for that is I mean the standard I, the industry standards is, uh, these days at the very least is going to be uh, Jira like Jira I, I practically everybody I know uses Jira for that sort of stuff to just track like have a backlog of issues and things that you're working on like you saying that or putting them in different states saying that well, I'm either working on this thing, or it's in code review, or it's in testing, or it's done, or whatever. I, if you're, if you're anything like me, I even have a Kanban board for my own personal stuff that I'm working on, uh, and then I use Trello. Uh, there are other tools out there, but Trello is, uh, it's a very nice thing. It has what I need to, uh, to do the work. Uh, and then what else can I mention? Well, 
at a the thing is like I can't really go into the at the language level because that is going to be very different for whoever does the work I mean for me if let's say that I'm working in TypeScript or I'm gonna do any type of front-end development well then my bread and butter tools are going to be TypeScript at the very least if I can get away with it and then I use tools like TS Node just so that I don't have to like sit and recompile things I can actually run the TypeScript uh, code directly which is a very nice thing uh, Nodemon or some other type of re uh, file watcher that gives me the ability to just do some code changes and then it restarts my server or restarts the process which is these are like very nice things but this it's, it's extremely specific to to that specific workflow and I mean if I go to my job I don't actually have necessarily those tools but they are bread and butter tools so let's say a bundler like I usually use webpack for most of what I do uh, because it I would say is probably the most common bundler that there is there's it's not the nicest one I I will admit it's probably the most powerful one though that I think we can agree on uh, it's very similar to for me and how you and you uh, if you're old school where it's it is very powerful you can do a lot with it but it also comes with a lot of extra work you have to learn quite a lot of stuff in order to use it uh, to be effective and there are like nicer options out there like parcel and so forth that kind of abstracts away a lot of the complexities of webpack uh, but uh, at the very least a bundler because it's basically standard practice at this time at this time then I would say uh, for front-end work uh, you're gonna need uh, a, a, a SBA framework of some sort or like an SBA 99% uh, of the time that's something that you're gonna need uh, for me that's gonna be react most of the work of I haven't done work in angular in quite some time now and the same thing goes for Vue. it's been a while since I did anything with uh, either those either of those but react I've been doing for quite some time uh, on a near well almost daily basis for a few years now so that's my go-to at the very least. React is, I think it's great. Uh, it's a little bit complicated for beginners to get started with and kind of get their head around how everything works. But once you do learn it, uh, I think it's a very effective, a very elegant way of doing work. And then for backend work, what else do I have that are like bread and butter tools? Well, of course, a database of some sort. Uh, it's not always that I use a database, but honestly, I mean, for professional reasons, I always, you always practically have a database. It's mostly when I do like my little YouTube videos where I don't need a database, so I kind of skip it. Uh, but that's pretty much always something that I use. Well, and then you have things like package manager, so that's going to be npm for the front end, for example. Or and for the backend languages, they also have their own package managers depending on what you're using. I think that these are the main bread and butter things. I can't really think of anything else that I would consider something that I use for almost like practically every project. I mean, I use Node uh, for anything that I like. If you've, if you've watched my uh, coding videos you'll know that I use Node for practically everything and that is because not necessarily because it's the best language ever or the best uh, runtime like uh, JavaScript is not the best language ever that's what I'm trying to say uh, it's just that it's very easy like if you're gonna show people something if you're gonna make an educational type of a video where you kind of show concepts that doesn't really matter if it's in JavaScript or any other language then you might as well use JavaScript because odds are that whoever watches that video will understand the code that's not so true if you have a very specific language because this back like JavaScript would be probably the only language I know of that is just universally understandable because practically anybody who wants to do any type of web development needs to understand it so what I want you to take away from this is that my bread and butter tools are probably gonna be as boring as a good vi text editor Visual Studio Code is a really good one. Uh, I usually use uh, IDEs for more specific things, like IntelliJ would be one. I actually use, I still use Eclipse for Java development because I actually prefer it to IntelliJ uh, for a few reasons, but these are personal reasons. Uh, and my philosophy is usually, if there is an ID that is specifically good at one thing, consider that first, because it's usually better to have something that is specialized at something than it is to have something that is always gen general. That is 
completely wrong if you're an Emacs person. Emacs is uh, going the complete uh, opposite direction there. And there's no right or wrong answer here. Second thing is a version control system, Git. Just I say version control to be politically correct, but I'm just going to say Git. Just Git, 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 Git. Uh, and uh, a Kanban board of some sort so that you can track like how things are going. Like these are the things that you're supposed to be doing. These are the things you're working on right now. And these are the things that are up for code review and testing and all of this good stuff, right? That, and I use the Kanban board for like practically every project that isn't like five minutes of work or something that I do just for fun. Uh, and then for like JavaScript work, which is also very common, uh, I usually use TypeScript, TS Node, Nodemon, Webpack, or some type of bundler so you can bundle things. Uh, I mean, test runners like Jest, etc., etc. Uh, there are many things that I could tell you about language specific things, but I think that these are the high level things that are practically going to be true every single time. And then, of course, a database of some sort. It's either going to be a relational database like Postgres or MySQL. Uh, or MongoDB. Redis is of course something I use quite often as well if I'm doing ses session management and so forth. But I think that these are going to be the main things that I consider my bread and butter uh, tools. Have a great day!